Good morning. Welcome to video lecture on real analysis program BSc subject mathematics paper 1 semester 5th semester chapter Riemann integration name of the presenter Dr. Sridhar. So let us start. Now in this <coughs> session we are going to learn about monotonic functions. So what are monotonic function and some theorems on monotonic functions. Okay, so this is the learning objective of this course. These are the session outcomes. These are the prerequisites increasing and decreasing function then integrable function. So now uh, go to monotonic function. So first we should know what is a monotonic function. So monotonic function means a function is known as a monotonic in the interval i if it is either increasing or decreasing in the interval i. Right? Now see here in this figure, in the first figure a function f of x it is decreasing now this is the x as the x takes the values from a to b as x takes uh, the values from a to b the function is decreasing okay so therefore this is known as a decreasing function similarly here as x takes from the uh, points a to b the function is increasing it is going up whereas it is going down as x takes the values from a to b the function f is going down whereas in this the function is going up as x takes from a to b so this is increasing function and this is a decreasing function okay so a function f is said to be monotonic if it is either increasing or decreasing right so this is known as monotonic function so now <coughs> we prove theorem uh, it's the theorem one if f is monotonic in the interval a to b then it is integrable in the closed interval a b if it is monotonic in in some interval say a b then it is also integrable in the same interval a b okay so that we have to prove so here to prove this one let f is a monotonically increasing in the interval a b so then f is bounded okay when it is monotonically increasing means it is bounded so when it is bounded means it has both upper and lower bounds okay so therefore let f of a and f of b are its two bounds okay next let epsilon be any positive number epsilon be any positive number now as f is monotonically increasing okay already it is given f is monotonically increasing so we have uh, that is the set we have a set that is a is equal to x0 comma x1 comma x2 and so on xr minus 1 comma xr dash dash up to xn equal to b b any partition of a b okay b any partition of a b such that the length of each sub interval is less than epsilon divided by f of b minus f of a plus 1. So we have to choose a partition of a b in such a way that the length of each sub interval is less than epsilon divided by f of b minus f of a plus 1. So where f of b minus f of a plus 1 is a number. Okay, either it may be in the form of f of b minus f of a plus 1, right? So, it's less than this one. Next, let delta r is xr minus xr1, xr minus 1. It is the length of each subinterval. And here, mr, capital mr is f of xr because it is a least upper bound. And small mr is the greatest lower bound that is f of xr minus 1, okay? So, now uh, we have wpf that is oscillation of oscillation oscillatory sum so oscillatory sum wpf is given by summation of uh, capital mr minus small mr into delta r this is by formula 
so which is equal to summation of what is mr capital mr is f of xr then what is f of xr minus 1 sorry what is small mr small mr is f of xr minus 1 so small mr is f of xr minus 1 delta r delta r as it is now length of the each sub interval we have taken such that epsilon divided by f of b minus f of a plus 1 okay so therefore this is replaced by epsilon divided by f of b minus f of a plus 1 into summation of this f of xr minus f of xr minus 1 <coughs> this way okay or this is equal to epsilon divided by f of b minus f of a plus 1 into this is summation of f of xr means it is nothing but f of b because xr is b f of b minus f of xr minus 1 is nothing but that is f of a because these are the lower and upper bounds so there are the two bounds so f of b minus f of a so which is always less than epsilon because f of b minus f of a here the lay it's it is equal to what f of b minus f of a plus 1 therefore this will get cancelled and you will get this is equal to less than epsilon so therefore the oscillatory sum wpf is equal to is less than epsilon v got so therefore what happened f is integrable next uh, we take some problems on this uh, problem one give an example of a riemann integrable function on ab which is not monotonic okay so we have to give an example of a function which is a Riemann integrable but not monotonic okay so here we consider a function that is f of x is equal to absolute value of x minus 1 by 2 for all x belongs to the interval x 0 to 1 right now see here uh, when you take the values from 0 to 1 when you take the values from 0 to 1 this f of x goes on decreasing 0 to 1 by 2 it goes on decreasing for example put x equal to 0 here what we get f of 0 is equal to absolute value of 0 minus 1 by 2 that is absolute value of minus 1 by 2 so it's equal to 1 by 2 right then take 0 is equal to 1 by 4 1 by 4 so when x is equal to 1 by 4 this again uh, absolute value of 1 by 4 minus 1 by 2 is again minus 1 by 4 so absolute value of minus 1 by 4 is again plus 1 by 4 so in the earlier we got f of 0 as 1 by 2 next we got x is equal f of uh, uh, 1 by 4 as 1 by 4 so 1 by 2 is more than 1 by 4 so it is decreasing up to where up to 1 by 2 it is decreasing uh, up to 1 by 2 it is decreasing next when you substitute x equal to 1 by 2 then what happened f of 1 by 2 is 1 by 2 minus 1 by 2 is 0 next substitute x equal to 1 by 4 so 1 by 4 minus 1 by 2 so 1 by 4 minus 1 by 2 it gives minus 1 by 4 so it is plus 1 by 4 okay so earlier it was 0 next it goes to 1 by 4 so like that it goes on increasing so from the interval 0 to 1 by 2 the function f of x is monotonically decreasing function but from the value when it takes values from 1 by 2 to 1 1 by 2 to 1 it is a monotonic increasing in the interval 1 by 2 to 1 so what we have a function f uh, according to the definition of monotonic a function f is said to be monotonic if it is either decreasing function or it is an increasing function in that interval but here what we are getting we are getting in the interval 0 to 1 itself uh, on some part it is monotonically decreasing on some other part it is monotonically increasing increasing so therefore this is not a monotonic function this is not a monotonic function but f is integrable but f is integrable in the interval 0 to 1 because as you check you can check uh, by calculating the oscillatory sum of f so uh, divide the the interval into a smaller sub intervals of some uh, length fixed length then calculate its oscillatory sum okay and then you will get uh, the oscillatory sum is less than epsilon okay so therefore f is integrable so that i will give as an exercise for you so then prove this so therefore f is 
integrable but f is not monotonic but f is integrable next similarly we have another problem that is the function f is defined in the interval 0 to 1 as follows f of x equal to 1 by q when x is any non zero rational number p by q in its lowest term and f of x equal to 0 when x is rational or 0 then value of integral is 0 1 none the answer is a you will get next we have a fundamental theorem of integral calculus so the first it, it states that if f is bounded integrable and admits of a primitive phi in a b then integration from a to b f of x dx is equal to phi of b minus phi of a right this we have to prove so to prove this we take let epsilon be any positive number now since phi dash is f because uh, f is bounded and integrable and admits primitive phi it is given admits primitive phi means phi dash is equal to f then phi dash is equal to f means it is bounded and integrable in a b means phi dash is also bounded and integrable in a b then there exists a partition p which is equal to set from a is equal, equal to x naught comma x1 x2 so on xr minus 1 comma xr dash dash up to xn equal to b such that such that uh, summation from r is equal to 1 to n phi dash of xi r delta r minus integration from a to b phi dash of x dx and absolute value is less than epsilon we get a partition p in that interval such that it should satisfy this condition this condition so then call this equation as one now by Langerhans mean value theorem of differential calculus okay and there exists a point xi r belongs to the interval ir such that phi of xr minus phi of xr minus 1 is equal to phi dash of xi r into delta r okay this is by Langerhans mean value theorem the, which we have learnt in a second semester of psc right so uh, by using Langerhans mean value theorem this is holds true so which means that phi dash of xi r into delta r is equal to so phi dash of xi r into delta r is equal to so phi dash means phi of xr minus phi of xr minus 1 which is summation of phi of xr minus phi of xr minus 1 which is equal to so phi of xr means it is phi of b phi of xr minus 1 it is phi of a it is phi of a so call this equation as 2 okay so now from 1 and 2 from 1 and 2 now substituting all these values here so phi dash of xi r delta r is equal to phi of b minus phi of a now substitute this value of phi dash of xi r delta r here here okay so which gives summation of phi of b minus phi of a minus integration from a to b phi dash of x dx less than epsilon now as xi is any positive number so phi of b minus phi of a minus uh, integration from a to b phi dash of x dx is equal to 0 or integration from phi dash of dx is equal to send this term here it gives phi of b minus phi of a next as if phi is a primitive so phi dash is equal to f so here replace phi dash by f which gives integration of a to b f of x dx is equal to phi of b minus phi of a so this is the required proof and which is known as a uh, fundamental theorem of integral calculus okay so uh, next we have some problems on this let f be a Riemann integrable on a b and let f be a continuous at x naught belongs to the closed interval a b uh, if phi of x is equal to integration from a to x f of t dt comma a less than or equal to x less than or equal to b then phi dash of x is equal to 0 a minus x f of x naught none so here answer you will get answer as c that is f of x naught so try this next we have another one let f be a continuous function on a b and let phi be a differential function on a b such that phi dash of x is equal to f of x 
for all x belongs to the closed interval AB, then integration from A to B f of x dx is equal to uh, that is AB minus A, option B, A plus B by 2, option C, phi of B minus phi of A, and option D is none. And the answer is phi of B minus phi of A. Next, uh, we have another theorem that is a change of variable in an integral. So here it states that if first one integration from a to b f of x dx exists okay next second one phi is derivative function with domain alpha beta such that phi of alpha is equal to a phi of beta is equal to b next third condition is phi dash is bounded and integrable and phi of t is not equal to zero for all t belongs to alpha beta then integration from a to b f of x dx is equal to integration of alpha to beta f of phi of t alpha to beta f of phi of t into phi dash of t dt okay so this we have to prove if all these conditions are satisfied then we have to show this one okay so let us prove this one now it is given that phi dash uh, phi dash of t is not equal to 0 for any t belongs to alpha beta so phi is strictly monotonic in alpha beta so it is not equal to 0 phi dash of t is not equal to 0 means uh, phi is strictly monotonic in alpha beta then let b is equal to let p is equal to alpha equal to t naught comma t1 t2 tr minus 1 tr dash dash tn minus 1 tn is equal to beta be any partition of alpha beta okay next similarly let p dash huh? p dash is equal to uh, that is a comma x naught x1 x2 xr minus 1 xr dash dash xn minus 1 xn is equal to b b the corresponding partition of a b corresponding partition of a b okay so then and we let phi of tr is equal to xr let there exist a point uh, xr such that phi of tr is equal to xr okay next by lagrange's mean value theorem xr minus xr minus 1 is equal to so xr means phi of tr from this equation minus xr minus 1 becomes again from this equation if we replace r by r minus 1 this becomes phi of tr minus 1 which is equal to by Lagrange's mean value theorem tr minus tr minus 1 into phi dash of nr so where this nu r lies between tr minus 1 to tr so this is by Lagrange's mean value theorem so let phi of nr is equal to epsilon r so then we have summation from r is equal to 1 to n f of xi r into xr minus xr minus 1 is equal to now in this case summation from r is equal to 1 to n f of xi r so f of xi r means it is phi of nr then into xr minus xr minus 1 is phi dash of nr into tr minus tr minus 1 that is by Lagrange's mean value theorem so which is equal to 1 now f is integrable in interval a b so uh, f of composite function f of phi and phi dash are integrable in alpha beta so these are integrable in alpha beta so when f and g are integrable then f g is also integrable by product uh, by integrability of product rule okay so therefore here the composite function f of phi is integrable and phi dash is also integrable therefore its product that is f of phi into phi dash is also integrable in alpha beta so therefore <coughs> when the norm uh, of partition p tends to zero so norm of p dash also tends to zero therefore we from the one equation we, we get a to b f of x dx integration from a to b f of x dx is equal to integration from alpha to beta composite function of f of phi into phi dash of t dt which is equal to integration from alpha to beta f of phi of t into phi dash of t dt so hence the proof next we solve some problems very simple problems are there so uh, by using change of variable in an in integral evaluate integration from minus 1 to 1 dx by 1 plus x square so here let assume that let i is equal to integration from minus 1 to 1 dx by 1 plus x square now call this equation as 1 next put x is equal to 1 by u then differentiating dx becomes minus 1 by u square du 
substituting these in 1 then we get i is equal to minus integration of minus 1 to 1 du divided by 1 plus u square substitute all the values and simplify you will get this equation and integration of 1 by 1 plus u square is nothing but tan inverse of minus u with minus sign and limit from minus 1 to plus 1 substitute the limits and you will get this is equal to minus pi by 2 so therefore the value of the integral is minus pi by 2 similarly uh, try this problem by changing the variable x is equal to t raised to 3 by 2 in the integral from minus 1 to 1 dx the value of the integral minus 1 to 1 dx is okay so is 0 the first option is 0 second option is 2 uh, third option is 5 fourth option is none okay so make the substitution x is equal to t raised to 3 by 2 in this equation and calculate the value and answer, you will get the answer as b that is equal to 2 so i hope you try this problem and get the solution so these are all the references so that's all for today's, uh, today's session and we'll get uh, continue in the next class thank you